Serrano, Serrano, and Serrano once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with Fruit of the Day, the one and only Serrano Pepper. So maybe you like it spicy. Maybe you prefer it mild. Maybe you've never heard of the Serrano Pepper before. Maybe you eat them all the time. Well, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on why, because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of the serrano pepper all right first up a little bit of background information the serrano pepper is a fruit i'll say that once again the serrano pepper is a fruit just like all of the other peppers that we've discussed guys here's what you have to understand is that if a plant food has seeds and an edible flesh then it is considered a fruit like most peppers, the serrano is the fruit <laughs> from a plant species called Capsicum annuum, right? Like tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplant, peppers are a part of the nightshade vegetables family. But once again, peppers are fruits, not vegetables. So there we have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only serrano pepper. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. The serrano pepper looks a lot like the jalapeno, but if you think the jalapeno is hot, just wait until you get the kick from the serrano. This type of pepper ranks between 5,000 and 25,000 on the Scoville heat index, also known as the hot pepper scale, which is a measurement used to rank the pugnant heat of chili peppers. The scale is named after the man who created it, so say hello to Wilbur Scoville. Now guys, take a look at the picture. As you can see, I'm not only displaying three different types of peppers, but also where they rank on the Scoville heat index, right? So as you can see, we have the poblano pepper, the jalapeno, and the serrano. Now, obviously they differ in shape and size, and they also differ in their heat index index by the way if you're looking for more information about the poblano and the jalapeno peppers believe it or not coach these has videos on them so please check my <laughs> youtube channel for more information so there we have it guys a little bit of fun facts about the one and only serrano pepper look more fun facts the serrano pepper is a green color ripening to red, brown, orange, or even yellow. It's about two inches in length, but don't let the small ones fool you. The smaller the serrano, the hotter. Another thing to note is that dried peppers can be much hotter than fresh ones. So guys, if anybody ever offers you a pepper, whether it's serrano, poblano, or jalapeno, you may want to make sure it's the fresh option, not the dried option, <laughs> okay? However, if you do prefer spicy things, then go ahead and eat them dry. So there we have it, guys. Even more fun facts about the one and only Serrano Pepper. Look, even more fun facts. Apparently, Coach D can't get enough of the Serrano Pepper. <laughs> when choosing a Serrano, select a firm, heavy, smooth-skinned pepper. Make sure the pepper doesn't have any moisture within or around it. Serranos are usually green, which are milder, eventually ripening to yellow, orange, or red. They typically don't do well when dry, so using them fresh offers the best results. Roasting them is another option, which can provide a deliciously spicy flavor. You can even freeze them after roasting. Interesting. If you wanna cut down on the heat a bit, Removing the seeds and cutting out the fibrous ribs inside the pepper helps since the majority of the heat is found there. Now, take a look at the picture. As you can see, someone is providing us a demonstration as to how to properly remove the seeds and the innards, <laughs> right? Now, removing the inside of the pepper is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to help remove the heat, but then it also helps to remove the most nutritious aspect of the pepper itself. What you have to understand is that the ribs contain a phytonutrient called capsaicin. Now, in a little while, we're gonna talk about all the different health benefits that capsaicin has to offer. 
So you got to kind of maybe straddle the fence. Either you want it hot and nutritious or mild and less nutritious. So ultimately, it's up to you. But whatever the case may be, please make the decision that's best for you and your taste buds. All right, now it's time to talk about the not so fun facts about the serrano pepper. As previously noted, the serrano pepper contains capsaicin. And while it has many benefits, it's also where the heat of the pepper comes from. That heat can cause problems for some. So before you head over to the chili pepper eating contest, be careful. It can cause problems to the mucous membranes and burn your taste buds. Ooh, say it ain't so. The University of Michigan Health System suggests eating a banana to reduce this burning sensation. Make sure to wash your hands with vinegar after touching hot peppers if you feel a burn. Wear kitchen safe gloves when dealing with capsaicin as well. Avoid contact with your eyes when handling peppers. Also, if eating too much, <clears throat> it's been known to trigger asthma attacks. For anyone prone to asthma or who may have an allergy, steering clear hot peppers is best. So there we have it, guys. If you find yourself having to uh, deal with serrano peppers or any type of pepper for that matter, you want to make sure that you uh, wash your hands or wear gloves and definitely do not touch your eyes, okay? So there we have it, guys, the not-so-fun facts about the one and only Serrano Pepper. All right, now it's time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. That's right, guys. It's going to help us to understand and read food labels. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, when we talk about the 520 rule, really what we're talking about is the percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our picture, or shall I say our sample food label. As you can see, it is divided into one, two, three parts. We have a lavender portion, a yellow portion, and a light blue portion. So let's take each portion piece by piece. First, let's talk about the percent daily value column. As you can see, it is represented as percentages, and some of these percentages are as low as zero, but believe it or not, it can go up to as high as 100%, and in some rare cases, it may even exceed 100%. Now, let's take a look at the yellow portion. The yellow portion basically highlights a few uh, nutrients, such as saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, unfortunately, these nutrients do a really good job at causing harm, sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple. So if anything, you wanna make sure the percent daily value for these nutrients is as close to 0% as possible. Next, let's take a look at the light blue nutrients, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Now, those vitamins and minerals basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now. Here's the good news. These nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than causing harm, sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple, they actually promote wellness and health within the body. That's right. So when it comes to percent daily value, you wanna make sure that these percentages are as close to 100% as possible. Now, let's dive just a little deeper into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, if a food or beverage item offers anywhere from 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item that you're consuming offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item that you're consuming offers you 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now it's time to talk about the nutrition facts of the serrano pepper. Now, for today's lecture, we're going to say that a single serving of serrano peppers is equal to one cup of chopped raw serrano peppers. 
So in this serving, we're only going to get 34 calories, 7.9 grams of carbs, and look at this, 1.8 grams of protein. Now the reason why I highlighted this is because for some reason, a lot of people seem to think that fruit does not contain protein. Well, Mythbuster. <laughs> also, 0 0.5 grams of fat, and look at this, 3.9 grams of fiber. Amazing. Now let's talk about the vitamins and the minerals. Vitamin C comes in at a whopping 79% DV. Excellent source. Vitamin B6 comes in at 27% DV. Excellent source. Vitamin A comes in at 20% DV. Excellent source. Vitamin K comes in at 15% DV. Good source. Then we have manganese coming in at 10% DV. Good source. Now let's talk about potassium coming in at only 9% DV. Not a good source. Niacin, one of our B vitamins coming in at only 8% DV, not a good source. Copper, 7% DV, not a good source. Folate, 6% DV, not a good source. Magnesium, 6% DV, not a good source. Riboflavin and iron, each coming in at only 5% DV, not a good source. Then we have vitamin E, thiamine, and phosphorus all coming in at only 4% DV, not a good source. So there we have it, guys, the nutrition facts about the one and only Serrano pepper. All right, now it's time to dive into the health benefits. And yes, peppers do have lots of health benefits. So here we go. Before we dive into the health benefits, guys, let's talk about the principle of cause and effect. Here's what you need to know. The principle of cause and effect is one of the seven hermetic principles, and it simply states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. Now, the reason why I bring this up is to let you know that if you want to be healthy, well, you have to cause it. You have to put the right things in your body. It's the same thing for disease. If you want to be sick, well, you're going to cause that too by putting the wrong things in your body. So let's focus on how to become well. Let's focus on how to become healthy. Let's focus on how to become disease free. <laughs> so what I want to do is list the benefit, but then I also want to let you know which phytonutrient is responsible. So first up, serrano peppers, are an immune system booster. Amazing. Now the question is, which phytonutrients are responsible? Well, say hello to vitamin C and carotene. Number two, serrano peppers improve heart health. How nice. Now, the question is, which phytonutrient causes this? Well, say hello to capsaicin. Number three, serrano peppers offer relief for arthritis and sore muscles. Interesting. Which phytonutrient does that? Well, say hello to capsaicin once again. Number four, serrano peppers may relieve shingles. Interesting. Well, which phytonutrient causes this? Well, capsaicin <laughs> once again. And number five, serrano peppers cool you down. That's right, guys. Even though it may be hot, it offers you a lot of cooling. So the question is, which phytonutrient does this? Well, say hello to capsaicin again. Guys, remember something, the majority of the capsaicin is located on the inside of the pepper, not the outside. So it's actually found in the, in, in the hottest portion of the pepper. So here's what you got to understand is that if you decide to remove the seeds and the insides of the pepper, well, you're getting rid of the capsaicin, which provides most of the health benefits. So once again, you got to figure out a way to walk the fine line. Do you want the nutrients or do you want the heat, right? So ultimately, the decision is yours. But once again, these are the health benefits about the one and only Serrano pepper. All right, it's time to talk about food. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we love food here. Now, normally, our go-to website for everything vegan is ForksOverKnives.com. But today, I thought I'd switch it up just a little bit. And I want to introduce you to a new website. It's called OneGreenPlanet.com. Once again, OneGreenPlanet.com. Now, I came across this website and they have a lot of great information and, of course, a vegan 
serrano pepper recipe that I want to share with you right now. So the name of the recipe is the serrano pepper and sweet pea soup. Take a look at the picture. Looks delicious, especially if you love the color green, right? <laughs> Now, if this soup appeals to you, then please go to the description box and click on the link. The link is going to take you to onegreenplanet.com and you're going to find a lot of great information. It's going to give you the ingredients, the cooking instructions, right, and everything else that you need to know. Oh, even the cooking time. That's right, guys. So do me a favor. Click on the link, make it, taste it, come back to the video and share your thoughts. So there we have it, guys. One amazing vegan serrano pepper recipe from onegreenplanet.com. All right, 23% nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the recipe. Coach D, thanks for the fun facts and the not so fun facts and even the nutrition facts, right? But what I really wanna know is, when should I eat more serrano peppers? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that's your question, then the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more serrano peppers, is Nature Day. What? Nature Day? Oh yes, good old Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, some of you may not know exactly what the challenge is all about. Well, in a nutshell, here we go. The 23% challenge is a monthly seven-day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, and your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing about the challenge is that number one, it's monthly, meaning every month, January all the way through December. And number two, it's only seven days, but it's the first seven days of every month, meaning the first all the way through the seventh. Now, here's the thing that you got to understand is that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, which means Nature Day is the first day of the month. So whether it's February 1st, March 1st, or even April 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, so maybe I've piqued your interest and maybe you want to know more about Nature Day. Well, guys, Nature Day is all about eating more plants. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing that you're going to eat on Nature Day. So what does that mean? It means that for the first day of every month, you only eat plant foods. And of course, you only drink water. Now, I do understand that some of us may be opposed <laughs> to eating more plants, and that's okay. So what I believe is that we need to do baby steps. That's right. So maybe you want to do uh, before 12 p.m. or after 12 p.m. if you can't go a whole day. Now, for those of us who are a little more committed, why? Because maybe we've been stricken with the big four, meaning heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and obesity. Maybe you have skin problems like acne. Maybe you have digestive problems like constipation. Maybe you have issues with focusing your attention, right? Or maybe you're considering transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet and you want to be committed, but you need an easy way to do it. Well, guys, try to become a 3% vegan, right? What is that? Well, it's any person, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up, try to become a 10% vegan. What is that, you may ask? Well, it's anyone, man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next is a 17% vegan. Now, this is anyone who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. So the question is, what do you eat, Coach D? Well, for the first seven days of every month, I only eat foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods. Those happen to be fruits, vegetables and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and let's not forget about good old whole grains. That's right. And of course, I only drink water. So the question is, what type of vegan do you want to become? All right, it's time for Coach D's tips. That's right. I want to offer you a little bit of help, a little bit of advice, a little bit of assistance. Why? Because I want your nature day to be successful. So tip number one, 
Go visit your local grocery store. Now, when you get there, you're only going to go to two places. Number one is the produce section. Number two is the freezer aisle. Why those two places? Well, the produce section is going to offer you fresh plant foods. The freezer aisle is going to offer you frozen plant foods. Now, some of us may wonder, but Coach D, what's the difference? What's best, fresh or frozen? Well, here we go. As far as the nutrient content is concerned, they're both pretty much the same. Now, if you're the type of person who loves to gobble down their plant foods the moment you get them home, well, you probably want to opt for the fresh options. However, if you're the type of person who likes to delay eating their plant foods, maybe you are procrastinating on eating your plant foods, then you probably want to opt for the frozen variety. Tip number two, go to the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So, when you're done with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan, not vegetarian options. Providing they do, ask for a quick sample. Hopefully you like it and then purchase your food either by the pound or maybe even two, maybe three pounds if you really, really, really like it. Tip number three, go visit your local farmer's market. Now guys, farmers markets are amazing. Why? Because they only cater to the organic plant food market. That's right. So if you're the type of person who has to have organic this, organic that, right? <laughs> then you probably want to go to your local farmers market. Now, if you don't know where one is, it's easy. Go to Google, type in farmers markets near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Tip number four. It's time for us to support the vegan community by eating at a vegan restaurant. That's right, guys. Vegan restaurants are amazing. And I'll tell you why. Number one, <clears throat> they do the cooking for you. Number two, they hire vegan chefs. Now, vegan chefs, well, they're great too. Why? Because they not only know how to cook plant foods, but they also know which plant foods to combine together to yield the most nutritious, delicious dishes. Tip number five, you may want to get a vegan meal prep company subscription. That's right, guys. These meal prep companies are wonderful. Why, you may ask? Well, it's a three-step process. They cook it. They deliver it. You eat it. It's just that simple. So there you have it, guys. Five tips from Coach D to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day, and this comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. We want to know, true or false, the Scoville Heat Index, also known as the Hot Pepper Scale, which is a measurement used to rank the pungent heat of chili peppers, is named after the man who created it, Wilbur Scoville. Now, I believe I covered this information earlier, so if you didn't hear it, or maybe you tuned me out, <laughs> please rewind and put your answer in the comment box below. We'll greatly appreciate it. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please like, subscribe, share the video, especially if you love Serrano Peppers. And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. Always remember to take care, God bless, and never ever forget that Coach D loves you.